In this segment, we're going to show the installation or integration of the AMD Athlon XP into a motherboard. Now, the Athlon and Athlon XP install into socket 462, which is otherwise known as socket A. If you look at the socket, it actually says socket 462 on it, so that would be what you'd want to see on the socket itself. Now, the AMD Athlon is a little bit more troublesome installation than a Pentium 4, and there's a couple of precautions that you have to be careful about. Number one, if I actually show you the, uh, the, the chip, I'm going to take it out of the package here. If you see in this package, the Athlon exposes the die on top of the processor. That's actually the back side of the actual silicon processor die that you're looking at there. Now, the problem with this is that if you, as you press the heat sink down on top of this, if you press it down on an angle, you can actually fracture the die. Of course, that's the end of the processor. And they usually don't warranty that type of a failure because it was caused by improper installation. So in order to help the, process, or the uh, heat sink be firmly seated on top of the processor and not you know, be pressed in on an angle, there are four pads, you know, one in each corner of the processor. Now, these are just an installation aid. They stay on there. They serve no purpose other than to you know, help it so that you don't rock the, uh, the heat sink back and forth too much. Now, Intel took a, a, a different solution to that problem with the cracking die, which they were having also in the Pentium 3. The Pentium 3 looks similar to the way that AMD Athlon looked. What Intel did in the Pentium 4 is install what's called a heat spreader. That's this metal piece that it completely covers the die. And it'll, it also takes all of the force from the heat sink and spreads it out on top of the processor. So it's not possible to crack the uh, Intel Pentium 4. That's why they could use a, a, a heat sink with an extremely high amount of tension or force in order to, uh, to grip the, the top of the chip without worrying about damaging the chip. So that's, uh, that's an advantage that the uh, Pentium 4 has. Well, in this case, we are going to be installing the uh, AMD Athlon. So I'm going to take it out of the package here. And just like with the uh, Pentium 4, this is a zero insertion force socket. So we've got this lever that I'm going to have to uh, raise up. Lift up this lever. And that releases the grip on the pins on the chip. Then I need to find pin 1, which on the Athlon is this uh, gold-colored triangle. indicates pin 1. Um, you could also look at it, and it's on the bottom as well. And plus, there's a missing pin in that corner. You need to align that with pin 1 on the socket. Once that's uh, lined up, simply drop the processor in. And I like to hold it down while I push the lever down. And now the processor is firmly installed in the socket. At this point, now we can install the heat sink. Now, the heat sink that came with the boxed AMD Athlon XP is this one here. And it has a piece of removable material to protect the thermal interface material. So I, I have to peel this off. And that exposes the uh, thermal interface material, um, which is to help, you know, transfer heat between the processor and the heat sink itself. Now, notice that the way uh, the, the bottom of this uh, heat sink is contoured, there is a sort of a raised, you know, portion here or in the, in the indented portion that has to line up over the uh, uh, raised part of the uh, socket. So when I install this, it has to go in this direction. Also, uh, another precaution is that once you do set this down on top of the processor, you don't want to start wiggling it around or twisting it back and forth or sliding it because what you'll do is you'll tear this thermal interface material. And if you do that, you'll have to then scrape it all off and reapply some of the you know, separate thermal transfer grease like, like from a syringe such as this. So we don't want to mess that up when we put it on. Now, what's going to retain this uh, heat sink to the motherboard is this uh, stainless steel clip here. There are two ends. You know, each end is going to engage over these tabs on the processor socket. So one is going to engage on this tab here and one on this tab. So I'm going to set this down. I'm going to engage the tab on the back side here. And once that's engaged. Now, I need to use a screwdriver to go into the slot on this side of the, uh, the clip. I'm going to make sure the other side is firmly engaged. And I simply press down. And engage that clip. There we go. Okay, making sure both sides are firmly engaged. And that completes the mechanical installation. Now all I have to do is plug in the uh, 
power into the CPU fan connector. So as I look around the board, I can see right here is the CPU fan power connector. And I'm going to plug this in. Slide up here. Okay. Now we have the fan connected and the CPU is successfully installed. At this point, uh, you know, the processor is installed and now we need to install the memory before the motherboard is ready to be inserted into the case. And move this uh, over here. Now this motherboard, like many of the boards today, uses a double data rate SD RAM, which uh, comes in a, what we call a DDR DIMM. I have one of these right here. A DDR DIMM has a single notch, kind of offset, not directly in the center, and that's part of the keying to prevent you from installing this backwards. If you look on your motherboard, like on this one, I have three DIMM sockets. They're usually numbered. I want to install it in the first one. Usually it'll be the one closest to the uh, processor. What you do is you bend these plastic tabs down to either side and then insert the module with the correct orientation into the socket and then simply push down until the side tabs engage and the DIMM is now successfully installed. So at this point, we've got the processor and the heat sink and the memory installed, and now the motherboard is ready to be installed in the chassis.